I'm going to preview the 2023 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. It's between three seed LSU, which they lost to South Carolina handily. And I mean, it was not even close. They lost by 24 points, though it could have been more. And Tennessee in the SEC tournament semifinal by two. While they play, and Iowa is 36, 31 and six on the year. By the way, LSU is currently 33 and two. So just an FYI, and Iowa is 36, 31 and six. And they've been on a tear re, uh, since February 9th, which their losses include for the year the following. Kansas State, UConn, NC State, Illinois, Indiana, Maryland. Actually, they won every game since February 22nd, but even still, after that loss to Indiana, they only lost one more time since then. So, now, the game is going to be played on Sunday, which is tomorrow, at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. On ABC slash ESPN plus I'm gonna go over some players to keep an eye on for both teams and I'm gonna start with the three seed LSU and I'm gonna go over like the starters and their averages as well as some bench, as well as bench players too I mean those are important Now, the starting lineup for LSU, first to keep an eye on is Angel Reese at Ford, 23.3 points per game, 15.6 rebounds per game, 2.2 assists per game, 1.8 steals per game, 1.6 blocks per game, 2.3 turnovers per game, 2.5 fouls per game. 16.7% from the three-point line, but that's one for six. You don't have to worry about her as a three-point shooter. Maybe she hit some mid-range shots. 71% from, from the free throw line on 331 attempts. That's a ton of attempts. In fact, that's more than the first two years at Maryland combined on the, on the free throw attempts alone. So... Next is Ladesia Williams. She started her career at South Carolina, then went to for two years, and then South, I mean, Missouri the last two years. And now she's at LSU for her fifth and final year. 9.6 points per game, 6 rebounds per game, 1.1 steals per game, 0.8 blocks per game, 1.1 turnovers per game, 3 fouls per game, though. Now 49.2% from the free throw line, which that's not as good as what it was. Now, Flage Johnson is the next player to keep an eye on. 11 points per game, 5.9 rebounds per game. 1.2 1, uh, steals per game, 0.8 blocks per game, 2.3 turnovers per game, 2.3 fouls per game, 69.4% from the free throw line, and 33 for 90, 99 on threes. Katari Poole is the next player to keep an eye on. 4.5 points per game. 2.6 rebounds per game. 2.4 assists per game. 1.5 steals per game. 1.7 turnovers per game. 2.1 fouls per game. 43.3% from the three-point line on 60 attempts. So she is a shooter. 64.2% from the free throw line though on 53 attempts. Alexis Morris. She started a career at Baylor for one year, 
she get she got kicked off the team for off the field stuff and I don't need to go into that <laughs> situation it was bad she went to Rutgers for one year then A&M for one year and LSU the last two years 15.2 points per game 2.9 rebounds per game 4 assists per game 1.9 steals per game 2.5 turns per game 1.9 fouls per game 77.5% from the free throw line 32.9% from the 3 point line and she had a huge game last game 27 points. And Angel Reese, 24 points. LaDaisia Williams, 16 points. Now, granted, I know LSU did not get any points off the bench last game. But I'm going to mention them anyway. Samaya Smith, 4.7 points per game, 4.1 rebounds per game, 1.1 blocks per game, 2.6 turnovers per game, 1.1 fouls per game, 56.5% from the free throw line. On 62 attempts and one for one on threes. Don't have to worry about her as a shooter. Now, last tier, Poa is another player to keep an eye on. Not 3.3 points per game. One turn per game, 1.3 fouls per game, 51 for 58 on free throws, which is 87.9%. 8 for 28 on threes, 28.6%. And Jasmine Carson, which I know that name because she went to West Virginia previously before LSU for two years I mean and she started a career at Georgia Tech even so 8.4 points per game 2.3 rebounds per game 1.1 steals per game 1.3 turns per game 0.9 fouls per game 75.9 percent from the free throw line and 33.1 percent from three 57 for 172 so she can shoot the ball so as you could tell there's only like a few shooters you gotta keep an eye on from three for LSU and I'm pretty sure that's all that you need to know that's the ones that play the most this year because everybody else is either transfer portal or not even playing yeah that's yeah, I said transfer portal because there's two of them in the transfer portal right now. Now, Iowa. Obviously, you need, you got to keep an eye on Caitlin Clark. She set a record again. In terms of point, points in a semifinal. And she had a 40-point triple-double the the game before too I mean now some starters to keep an eye on for Iowa besides Caitlin Clark and I need to go over her stats first since I just started with her 27.7 points per game 7.2 rebounds per game 8.6 assists per game 1.5 steals per game 4.1 turnovers per game that's one thing about Caitlin Clark you gotta have to worry about if you're an Iowa fan here is the turnovers. 2.1 fouls per game, 83.9% from the free throw line, 38.7% from three on 341 attempts. Monica Cesano is a player keeping on 17.2 points per game. 6.5 rebounds per game, 6.7 steals per game, 2 turnovers per game, 2.7 fouls per game, 78.9% from the free throw line, 0 for 1 on threes. McKenna Warnock, you gotta worry about too. I mean, 10.9 points per game, 5.9 rebounds per game, 2 assists per game, 0.9 steals per game, 2 turnovers per game, 2.3 fouls per game. 80.5% from the free throw line, 38.8% from the three point line. Gabby Marshall is another player keeping on 6.1 points per game. As a starter, 1.6 steals per game, 0.8 turnovers per game, 1.2 fouls 
per game, 53.3% from the free throw line on 15 attempts, so 37.3% from the three point line. Tate Martin, 7.5 points per game, 4.2 rebounds per game, 3.5. Assists per game, 0.9 steals per game, 1.6 turnovers per game, 2 fouls per game, 40.2% from the three point line, 83.3% from the free throw line on 54 attempts. That's the starters. Now the bench players Hannah Stolk, 6.6 points per game, 4 rebounds per game. 1.1 turnovers per game, 1.6 fouls per game, 1 for 6 on threes, 16.7%. Uh, 46% from the free throw line at, on 87 attempts. So if you have to hack, hack a shack somebody, this is the person to do it. Asin O'Grady is a player to keep an eye on, only because she played last game, 2 points per game. 6 for 12 on free throws, 1 for 1 on threes. That's only because of that. Cindy Falter, 2.9 points per game, 2.4 rebounds per game. 0.9 fouls per game, 86.1% from the free throw line, 5 for 24 on threes, which is 20.8%. Molly Davis, 3.8 points per game. 0.6 steals per game, 1.1 turns per game, 1.3 fouls per game. 87.5% from the free throw line, 31.4% on the three point line on 51 attempts. I'm pretty sure that's everybody you need to know on Iowa, but I'm going to double check. Yep, that's the main ones you gotta keep an eye on. Well, I will say for this for both teams, sure you got a great win over, over a one seed, but you can't be complacent. I mean that's new rule number one and all this. And you don't want to be in foul trouble either. And you gotta contain the shooters, contain the slashers, you gotta take care of the ball so you don't have points out turnovers off of you. I mean, that's the, only re that's the reason why both of these teams won against their respective opponents last yesterday. That's the main reason. That's even despite Iowa getting out-rebounded pretty handily. I mean, 49-25. to 25. I mean, that's the truth. And it made all, of course, you want to get to the free throw line to make them all account. Like, I know Iowa did that last game, but LSU didn't. I mean, 10 for 16 on free throws. Of course, you want to limit those as much as possible in terms of getting the opponent that many attempts. You got rebound the ball. Iowa need to do a better job in that category going into this game. But LSU is a different animal. I mean, than South Carolina. I mean, than South Carolina. To me, South Carolina is more difficult to rebound against. Yes, that's in. Granted, you do need a keep LSU off the glass too. I mean, Angel Reese is a double-double machine. The only double-double that she did not get against all year long, I believe, is South Carolina. And that's the truth. And really, South Carolina is taller than LSU also. That's a keep in mind deal. So it's not like It's a huge discrepancy. So this is a little bit better for Iowa's matchup in terms of size. Size for size here. When you think about it. Of course, you got to limit the points in transition. Fast break points. Points in the paint. Especially if you're Iowa against LSU. Or, I mean, most of the points yesterday came from the paint. If not long twos. It's not the three ball that that beat them. 
beat Virginia Tech. That's not. It's part of the reason, but it's not the main reason. They only like made three of those last game. LSU did. Good luck trying to defend a three, LSU against Iowa. That's gonna be tricky. I mean, three for thirteen for LSU. The only yeah, even if without those threes, few threes, they they lose the game. But even still, most of the points come from one area, the paint, mid range. I mean. I'm not sugarcoating it. They're not making. They've been not great at free throws. <laughs> As a, they were not great at free throws yesterday. I mean, and they got fortunate. And I would say this to Virginia Tech: Watch out for LSU's run eventually. And same thing goes for LSU for Iowa's run. Because both these teams are dangerous when they are on a run. Obviously. Of course you got you gotta stay composed and you cannot pick up any stupid technical fouls yeah I'm talking about you LSU on that with with Kamari pool you don't need a mouth off to the ref you don't need a mouth off and get teed up it could hurt you so same thing goes for Iowa I know they didn't get attacked but I'm just saying, you can't do that. You just can't. You don't want to give other team a chance at the free throw line and make them count. Obviously, you want to limit your, their best players as much as both of these teams need to limit their opposing best players as much as possible, which good luck try to do that to Kalen Clark, by the way. If South Carolina is going to do it, I don't know who will. I mean, but my simple game plan, actually, if I was LSU, try to take everybody away. Except Caitlin Clark. That's and try to make her shoot threes with a hand in her face and hope for a miss. But it's easier said than done. South Carolina couldn't do it. They couldn't. And she had a quickness advantage. I was quick, they're faster pace, which is going to test LSU. But I know that LSU's physical, and that's gonna test. I won this game too, but they're they're similar to South Carolina in a way, but not as tall. I mean, and not as deep in terms of bench. I call it the way it is, and it's based on the numbers. I'm not. I mean, from, not only from last game, but all year long. So. You got to play loose and easy. You have nothing to lose here. Of course, you want to win a title. But, I mean, just play your game. Do what you have been doing up to this point. And I will say this. LSU is very, very fortunate to have an easier path to, to leap uh, up to last game, not to face a one seed. Because Indiana did lose in the second round. I think Indiana may have been a better team than Virginia Tech. I will also say South Carolina, I mean, LSU is very, very fortunate that Utah missed two free throws at the very end and they got fouled. I mean, and if they made them both, maybe they would have won the game if they would have one more stop or even forced overtime, maybe they win. But even if LSU does win on a game-winning shot or or in overtime, it, of course, it wouldn't matter then. I'm just pointing out the truth. And they did struggle against a ninth seed. And they have had the easier path up to this point. Yet, like, I mean, Hawaii, they dominated. Michigan, they dominated. But I thought Michigan would have put up a little bit more of a fight. I mean, of course, then two seed Utah. That's the highest seed they played against prior to last night, Virginia Tech. Of course, the ninth seed. So, really, they have had an easier path. And when you look at Iowa, I will say they are kind of fortunate that one seed. 
Stanford got eliminated in Sweet 16 too. So both of these teams kind of had easy paths with no one seeds in the way. Kind of easy. And I'm not sure. I'm not lying about that one. I mean, I was faced a 10 seed. A six seed Colorado, but a good Colorado team. A five seed Louisville. Of course, South Carolina. They're a bit more battle tested. And we'll have to wait and see what happens in this game. I expect it to be close. And currently, I was favored by three points. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyways, if you like this content, hit the like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Five subscribers. We're on the road to it. Let's go. And I'm going to go out there and predict, before this video is done, that Iowa wins the national championship. And either way, somebody's going to win their first title. So, it's regardless. But I'm predicting Iowa's going to win. I just don't think LSU's going to have an answer for Kalen Clark. And all that offense.